Howdy folks, I'm Part Time, and you're watching Part Time Tips and Tricks to Fast Draw. Alright, this Ruger is having a different issue. When you open the load gate, the cylinder's locked up. Won't turn. This is not a common problem, but you do run into it every now and then. When it happens, if you'll pull the hammer back slightly, it'll spin. <laughs> now I'm going to show you the problem. If you'll look right in here. The tip of the hand paw is sticking out into the breech. It's not dropping completely back into the breech correctly and it's locking up the cylinder. There, there's a little better view. See how that sticks out? That's supposed to set back in. It's an easily fixable problem. First thing we're gonna do, just like changing out the main spring, we'll start with the grips. <coughs> Try to hang on to your pieces. Then pin that. Now, unlike changing out the main spring, you don't have to take this out. You can just leave that in there. Unhook the trigger springs. Now you're gonna take the screws out of the gun. There are five screws in a Ruger, new Vaquero. Two in the back strap and three on the bottom. This is the smallest screw. We'll start with this one. And I like to take out the back strap screws. And you take out the two screws on the bottom. Now be careful when you take this apart. plunger right here it pushes up on the bolt see that it fell right out of there it's got a spring on it that pushes up on the bottom of the bolt or the cylinder latch we'll talk about that in a minute set this to the side there's another spring right there see that one that pushes on the back of that hand ball now this spring has already been cut this is something a lot of people don't know about. When you first open a brand new Ruger, new Vaquero, this spring is going to stick out past the frame. This one does not because I've cut it off. If you'll take that spring and you first get it, however much of that spring is sticking out, take your pliers and cut it off. Shorten that spring. There's no reason for there to be that much tension against that hand ball. Anytime you can lighten the spring, you're gonna slick up the action. I'm gonna set this out of the way. Let me show you something right quick on these screws. There's five screws that hold the gun together. They're all a little different. You need to remember this when you put the gun back together. So the shortest screw will go back here. The next two longest screws will go in the back of the back strap. Right there. And these screws with the shoulders on them are gonna go in the bottom. 
just like that. Now, if you'll notice, one of these is longer than the other. I'm about to show you why. The pin that holds the hammer in has a notch. This longest screw goes in and pushes against that notch. So when you put the gun back together, it doesn't matter which direction you put this pin back in. You go this way or you can go this way. But whichever side the notch is on, that's the side of the gun you need to put the longer screw in because that holds the hammer pin in. All right, let's put this out of the way. Now, this next pin, it's a little trickier to get out. What you want to do, and watch your fingers and your thumbs when you're doing this, hold the gun up. I've got my finger pushing on the back side of this pin slightly. I'm going to take a screwdriver. This is the load gate spring. You want to push down on the load gate spring slightly and push that pin forward. See that notch in that pin right there? Now it's on top of the load gate spring. Now, you can take a screw and push that on out. Now watch this. Oh, what a mess. There's the load gate, the hand paw. This is the bolt or the cylinder stop. Trigger transfer bar and load gate spring and the hammer and the hammer also has multiple pieces in it you'll notice this has a rod with a spring in it that is the plunger rod and there's a pin that holds that in this pin right here is one of the things that will wear out on a Ruger new Vaquero or even a Ruger old Vaquero. Because there's a saddle in this rod, this plunger rod right here. And it rubs metal to metal every time you draw the gun. And eventually this rod being bigger will eat through this smaller pin. And it'll break on you. And usually it'll happen in the middle of a draw. You'll pull the hammer back, pull the trigger, and the hammer won't go down. It never fails. You'll be on the line with a fully loaded gun in the middle of a competition and that's when it'll break when that happens you're gonna have to take your gun apart on the line take the main pin out take the loaded cylinder out empty the shells out show it clear have them bring you another gun or take this gun and go fix it so right now we want to fix the problem of the cylinder not rotating with the load gate open as I said it was the hand paw that was sticking out of the breech of the gun this corner of the hand paw is something smaller but, uh, was catching the cylinder preventing it from rotating you can take a dremel or a file and you want to put an angle on there i've already got one ready to go see the difference in that that's factory and that has been altered. See that little bit of an angle on there? That will fix the rotation problem. Now if you're wondering, this won't affect the way the gun shoots at all. Because the original Colts and the Colt clones, which we'll talk about in another video, actually have this angle on all of their hand paws. Because the hand paw is supposed to stick out in a Colt or a Colt clone to keep the cylinder from rotating backwards when you open the load gate. Because on a Ruger Vaquero, when you open the load gate, the cylinder won't spin backwards because of this little pin right here. This is an index pin that was added to the Ruger New Vaquero that wasn't on the original Vaquero. So when they put that in there, they put a squared off, where did that go? They put a squared off 
hand paw that didn't have an angle on it that was designed for this little bump right here that's supposed to go down and hit the frame of the gun which pulls the hand paw back into the end of the gun so where it's out of the way. The original Colts and Colts clone, Colt clones had half cocks. When you pull the gun to half cock, it rotated the cylinder in position for the bullet to come out of the load gate. And the hand paw sticking out of the back of the gun is what prevented the cylinder from turning backwards. <laughs> so, putting that angle on your hand paw is not going to hurt a thing. Put it back together. Got the angled hand paw. Put it on the hammer. Slide that in the gun. Put your load gate back on. Let me show you something while I'm looking at this. You'll notice on the end of this load gate, right here. You see that little half moon, little nipple looking thing right there? That is what keeps a Ruger Vaquero from being cocked or fired while the load gate is open. Here's how that works. The transfer bar sits right next to that when it's inside the gun. Well, actually, it sits down below it. When you fire the gun, you pull the trigger, the transfer bar raises up to get in front of the firing pin so you can set off the primer. And when it's down, you can open the load gate. When you open the load gate and you try to cock the gun, it won't do it. Over there. That's what stops it. That is the safety feature of a Ruger new Vaquero and of the old Vaqueros, whereas the original Colts and the Colt clones had a half cock. Once you pull the gun to half cock, you had to pull the gun fully cocked to release the the half cock so it would shoot. That was the safety on them. So this is this is the safety feature on a Ruger new Vaquero to keep it from firing while the load gate is open. We're gonna put that back in there. I'm going to take this pin, this is the hammer pin, it's got a notch on it. I like to put this pin back in where the notch is on the right side of the gun. That way I always know where the long screw is. Put it in there like that. Now the transfer bar is going to go on the side of the trigger. I'm going to drop that in there. Now this is kind of tricky. all kind of goes in together at the same time. Just like that. Put the hammer pan back in. Alright. Put the load gate fell out. Load gate goes in now. I'm gonna put the bolt and the load gate spring in at the same time. Drop it all in there just like that. Now, you can see right up under here, the load gate spring needs to go right in front of that little angle. That's what holds the load gate in. We're going to take our pin. We're going to get it started on the short side. The side that the spring's on. The same way we took it out, we're going to put it in. Push down on the spring, wiggle it in, just like that. And make sure that that's in the proper position. There we go. Now, don't forget to put the hand paw spring back in the back. It goes in the top hole. Screw goes in the bottom hole, spring goes in the top hole. Right, now is where you gotta hold your mouth this right to get it all together. Take the trigger springs, spread them out on either side of the, ham the hammer spring. 
just like that. Kind of hold that together with your fingers. Don't forget, we got to put this pin back in there. That pushes up on the bolt. trigger spring goes over the back of the trigger push it together now the first thing you want to do before you go put any screws in push down on the bolt stop And went together it got all set so the bolt wasn't springing back up. You want to make sure that bolt stop springs back up. Try it again. Got it together. There we go. Now everything lined up. Remember I put the slot on the hammer pin on the right side of the gun so I want to take the longest screw and put it in from the bottom on the right side. Believe it or not, this one screw will hold this entire gun together. One screw. I would not recommend firing a live round like that, but it will hold the whole thing together. Just like that. And start putting the rest of your screws in. You got the other shoulder screw. Goes on the opposite side of the notch. On the hammer pin. Shortest screw that is in the front. And then two screws in the back. And take the pliers. Just tr trigger springs back on those knobs. Take the pin out of the spring. Ball is still sticking out of the back of the breech. It now has an angle on it. And that allows the back of the cylinder to slide by it with no problem. Put the grip back on. Go shoot the fast draw. Thanks for watching Part Time. Tips and tricks to fast draw. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure and hit that like button. The quicker, the better.